I remember I used to think of pi as the equivalent or approximation to the 3.141825 number, or whatever it is, the continuation of that. Um, I remember thinking pi as just this specific number and as nothing else. So um, once I took trigonometry, I was extremely lost. And I remember just struggling a lot with the unit circle. So this video is going to be uh, helpful for those that have no idea what radians are. And um, I'm not going to go into too much detail or depth or, or anything like that. I just want to show like an easier way of remembering the unit circle. So, um, okay, so let's get started. So right here we have... Let's start at zero. We have zero degrees, and we're, we're gonna start off with degrees first, so you guys know exactly what uh, the whole unit circle is. So as you know, one full rotation is 360 degrees. Now you might be wondering, why the hell did you start with zero degrees then? Um, well, because once you start learning uh, about like the, the rules of like the quadrants and stuff, so this is our quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three and quadrant four, you know that our initial angle um, will always start counterclockwise. So we will always have zero degrees and just go up from there. So so let's, let's get started with, with degrees. So starting from zero, we go up 30 degrees. So we go 30 degrees. Then after that, you add 15 degrees to that. Then that will be 45. You add another 15 to that, that will be 60. Then from every quadrantal angle, you just uh, skip 30. So, or you just add 30 to that. Uh, so 60 plus 30 would be 90 degrees. So 90 plus 30, because we're, we're skipping that again from the quadrantal angle. 90 plus 30 would be 120. So then from, in, from the angles over here, we just add 15. So 120 plus 15 would be 135. So 135 plus 15 will just be 150. And we're getting close to that quadrantal angle once again. So 150 plus 30, that's 180. All right. So then 180 plus 30 is 210. All right. 210 plus 15 is 225. 225 plus 15 is 240. Uh, so, so we're getting close to that. And if, if you notice, we always have just three lines per, uh, per quadrant. So, uh, so 240 plus 30 would be 270. 270 plus 30 would be 300. 300 plus 15, because we're inside now, uh, 315. And we go plus 15, which would be 330. And then one, two, three, we already have our three lines here. So that means we're gonna just skip to the quadrantal angle. That would make it 360. 330 plus 30, 360, all right? So those are the angles uh, in degrees. Um, so now let's do them in radians. Okay, so if you're with me so far, as we talked earlier about the one full rotation would be 360 degrees, all right? So the equivalent to 360 degrees would be two pi radians, all right? So one full rotation would be two pi. Half of one rotation would be pi radians. Half of half would be pi over two. And then this one I just remember as like like three quarters of the circle, but I just put three pi and then it's just over two. So if you were to, so the equivalent, now that we know that the equivalent of pi is 180 degrees. So if you were to just put 180 times two, which would be a full rotation, it would give you two pi or it would give you 360, sorry. Um, so now that we got that, let's, uh, do the equivalent of uh, the degrees in radians. So what I like to do is I like to I like to count up 
or countdown from six. Uh, so it, this is just how I remember it. It goes six, four, three, and then we skip the quadrantal angles. So it would be, now we would count up. So it would be three, four, six. And then this one we would count down once again. So this one would be uh, six, four, three, skip the quadrantal angle. Uh, three, we would count up, we would count up, three, four, six, all right? So, you might be wondering, why are we doing this? So, if you notice, I put a line over the numbers, so that means these are a uh, denominator. So, now we got to find our numerators. Uh, for that, I just remember it as the whole first quadrant is pi, so all this is pi, Starting from the 120, uh, we would just, I would, I just think of it as, okay, so this is all pi. The second quadrant must start with two pi. So two pi, then we count up three pi and we skip four pi and just go straight to five pi. All right. Um, now, if you're wondering why it just skips four pi, I absolutely have no idea. <laughs> Maybe because, well, I mean, I do. It's just, it's not equivalent to uh, we don't have a reference angle for that. Um, like we, we wouldn't like if you put four pi over six, that would just reduce it to two pi over three, which is which would just be that. So, I mean, it just wouldn't make sense, right? Um, okay, so let's keep going. So, five pi over six, we skip this, uh, and this one just skips uh, six pi because obviously this that would just make it pi. So it would just be like seven pi over six. Then it goes back down to five pi and then four pi over three, um, four pi over three. So then this one would just be three pi over two because you know what we talked about earlier. I just think of it as like three quarters almost. Now, why does this keep on focusing? Damn, okay, so, so then we're almost done uh, with, with the uh, radians. So what I, this last quadrant, quadrant four, I like to think of it as having five seven elevens near your house so we just put five pi seven pi eleven pi because of that ready five seven elevens near my house so <laughs> that's my husky he's so cute so all right okay so if you followed everything that i said so far um and you're in pretty good shape uh, this is essentially the entire unit circle. The only thing we're missing, and it's probably the thing that trips people up the most, is the uh, X and the Ys, or the, the, the cosine and sines of the unit circle. Um, so what does that mean? So the unit circle is just one unit, uh, like all around, so it's just one radius. Um, so we go, so from this, the center down, it would just be one comma zero. This one would be negative one comma zero. This one would be zero comma negative one. This one would be zero comma one. Why is that? Because it's just one unit radius. So it's, um, it just goes to one because it's called the unit circle. All right. Um, so this is the X, this is the Y. You guys all know that you're all familiar with that. So um, so obviously, if you go right, it's positive. If you go left, it's negative. If you go down, uh, well, sorry. So X is positive when you go right. X is positive and negative when you go left. Uh, and then for the Y's, you're positive when you go up. And then Y is negative when you go down. So that's why you see this right here. Positive one comma zero because we don't have a Y. So that would just be zero. Um, this one is zero comma one because we don't have an X, we just have a Y, so it's zero comma one. Um, this one is negative one because it's to the left of the X axis of the origin. So obviously we know X's are negative towards the left side. So it's negative one zero. Then this one is zero negative one because we don't have an X and Y's are negative when you go down. So those, that's pretty just elementary algebra. Um, hopefully 
that's helped you out a little bit more. So now let's get into the hardest thing I think people just just, just have problem with, with the, which is what we talked about earlier, the X and the Ys of the sine and cosine, or of the unit circle, I should say. Um, so what I like to do is to remember what's positive and what's negative in the in the quadrants, right? So let me just give me one second here. Uh, you might be wondering what the hell are you doing? That's just so you can, um, that's just the, uh, the X and Y uh, coordinates. So, for the notation for the coordinates. Um, okay, so what I like to think about is the same, the same concept as moving, counting down that we did with uh, the radians. But this time we're just gonna do it with the x's um, or the cosines, or whatever you're most like uh, familiar with. So what I like to do is remember how we did that? Uh, we put the, the little line to indicate the denominator. Now we're gonna put the little line over here, the little hyphen, uh, and then we're gonna use the numerator this time around, okay? So then we're gonna put three, uh, two, one and that's gonna be the same thing that we did with the uh, the whole like method that we did wh where we counted down then we counted up then we counted uh, down and so on right so three two one then this one would be one two three then this one would be three two one then one two, three, all right? Now you wanna put all of those over two. So three over two, over two, over two, over two, over two, over two, and you just go all around. Over two, over two, over two, over two, over two. All right, so now that we got that done, what I like to do is look at whatever number I have, and I just like to think of like the opposite that we have. It's a little weird because, well, as you can see, we only have three numbers, right? We have three, two, and one. That's all the numbers we have. So this is how I like to think about it. If we have a three, then it's gonna be a one for the Y. So we have a three here, it's gonna be a one. Just put that, do the same thing. We put that over the, uh, the little hyphen. So we go three is the opposite. The opposite is one. And then for the twos, you just put another two as the opposite. All right. So one, the opposite is three. Okay. And then we do that all around. So one, the opposite would be three, two, the opposite just would be two, three, the opposite would be one, three, the opposite would be one, two, the opposite one would be three, one would be three, two would be just be two, and three would be one. Okay, and then once again we put all of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Once again we just put all of that over two. So one over two, one over two, one over two. And now that I have this right here, if you if you're thinking, oh, doesn't this just reduce to one? We'll we'll get to that. So just just leave it as is for now. So three over two. 3 over 2, uh, 2 over 2, 1 over 2, and just put everything that you just did over 2. Okay? All right. So now we're going to get to what I just talked about. So now we're going to put all of our numerators for our both our x's and our y's. We're going to put all of them under a radical. So... What's a radical? It's just a square root, all right? So we put square root of three on the radical, all right? So this would be, now this would be square root of three over two. If we put a one under the radical, that would just make it one, so we don't need it. Um, technically, it's not wrong, but it's not right either. You just you just wanna simplify it to, to that. Um, so then we go square root of two over two, square root of two over two. 
uh, square root of three, square root of three, square root of two, square root of two, square root of three, square root of three, square root of two, square root of two, square root of three, square root of three, square root of two, square root of two, square root of three. All right, and now that we did all that, now we just wanna get our signs correctly. So in quadrant one, you will have for your X and your Y, everything will be positive. In quadrant two, you will, your X will be negative and your Y will be positive. In quadrant three, your X will be negative and your Y will be pos uh, negative as well. Uh, and in quadrant four, your X will be positive and your Y's will be negative, all right? So, knowing that, we can just follow uh, this like method that I have, is just look at the sign for the quadrant. So if all of this is positive, I don't need to do anything because it's already positive. Now for this, the X's are negative, so what I do is I just put a little negative sign in front of the X's, all right? And quadrant three, we have all negative, so we just put negatives on all of them. Quadrant four, we have a positive X and a negative Y, so we just put a negative on the Ys. All right. Um, and that concludes the method that I follow when I think of the unit circle. Um, don't worry if you didn't get it the first time around, just feel free to like, just look through this and hopefully it helps you out. Um, I know it could be a little hard sometimes learning new things, especially in math. So uh, yeah, I mean, if, just, just give it a, a few runs. What I like doing is I just like to go over uh, the method that I just did and I just like to rewrite it from scratch uh, to see if I get it right the same time around. I just, you know, practice makes perfect. So uh, yeah, hopefully this helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions or if I fucked up anywhere here. Um, yeah, cool. All right, talk to you guys later.